brother. Good morning. Good morning. We had such a wonderful time last night at the bonfire. It was so warm. And I know that um, it's a tradition you've had. I'd never seen anything like it before. But there's a jar in the back. Um, Annette, can you hold up the jar? And through the season of Lent, if there are things that come to your mind that you want to give up and some sins, I was thinking, I burned a few and I thought of a few more this morning. <laughs> but I realized, you know, if we just burn them once, we kind of think that that's all there is. But um, we can do that. I promise I won't look at them, but I will get rid of them for us. So, But I thank you for everyone who um, made it possible. And I, I think if we ever need um, fires made or barbecues, Peter is amazing. I mean, we thought he was... His hair was going to go up in flames a couple of times, but it's all good. But it was a beautiful time. The flowers on the altar are given by Sarah Moden Alliston, who's not feeling well today, unfortunately, in honor and celebration of her daughter Rachel's birthday. Also, there will be no confirmation today. Um, Leo has the day off, even though he's reading, because he'd be the only one. So. <laughs> Russ said, we'll give him a little break, but thank you for assisting today. Are there any other announcements? Yes. I just want to remind everybody that the free flea market is taking place on May 4th. Anyone who has large items like furniture, junk uh, chests, anything that's large, we, are, we got permission to keep them in the parish hall. So if anyone has dressers they want to get rid of, TV stands, whatever, we have permission to keep them over there. It's going to be on May 4th, and I'm not sure of the date, but one Sunday in March, we're all going to get together after church and start separating and going through what we've already collected. So all hands on deck would be great. We'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Any other announcements? Oh, I have one more there. In your bulletins that you got um, online in MailChimp, do most people get MailChimp 
If you don't know what I'm talking about, please raise your hand. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. Well, we get the bulletin in the mail. There's something that Peter had sent to us, and he found coins for Lent, and it gives you a suggestion, a calendar, and like today would be um, pray today for thanking God, and then you put money in a jar, and then you bring it to church. But I'll make copies of that available next week. For those of you who might not have access to Wi-Fi and printers, you'll be able to do that. And we do have some birthdays today and an anniversary, so I will share that with you. It's on the last page of my papers here. Glenda Rivera Geis, her birthday is 220. Maria DiMartino is 223. And Mayfred McClellan is also on 223, and she'll be 97. And she is a very active participant in our Thursday Bible study. So. She, she is not listening in, but please um, give her a call or send her a card. She is a gift. And then we have the anniversary of Garrett and Joanne Stokes on 220 also. So if there are no other announcements, um, this is the day that the Lord has made. Please join me in the call to worship. We trust in you, O oh God. <laughs> we trust in you, O oh God, for you are faithful. We wait for you. Do not remember our failures. You are faithful, O oh God. Your love is steadfast. And now as we continue in praise and worship, let us listen to our video. Amen. Amen. That was beautiful. And now let us have some praise and worship. What are you thankful for today? Um, Kathy is raising her hand. <laughs> uh, yesterday, I wasn't able to attend the bonfire because my family was celebrating my sister Donna and her husband Dave's 50th wedding anniversary. Oh, wonderful. And it was a great celebration and uh, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Amen. Amen. Give them my best. I've known Donna a very long time. <laughs> I know you're probably starting to get tired of hearing from me each week, but <laughs> um, I was really thankful for that snowstorm last Tuesday. We had a big inspection at work, and I got a call in the meantime that during the inspection, I was supposed to have my lay speaker interview on a Zoom meeting. And when that storm came up, they moved my inspection to Monday and took one big load off my mind to just have that uh, interview to worry about. So I'm very thankful. For forgot for the snowstorm. I know most people probably aren't in the same boat, but <laughs> praises to God. My baby cousin was sick. She had a fever. I prayed to the Lord and said, Jesus Christ and Savior, please help my baby cousin. She has a fever and amen. And she's feeling much better. And I said, thank you, God. Amen. Um, I just want to say that I was very thankful for that bonfire last night. Um, I had never attended one before, and uh, I went out, we had wonderful soup and fellowship, and that was great, but then when we got to the fire, 
I heard somebody mention the, the sin box, where a box where we had all had the opportunity to write our sins on paper, or papers, many papers, <laughs> many, many papers, <laughs> and put it in the box. And I thought to myself, gee, I wonder what they're going to do with that box. Like, is this going to come back to bite me, you know? <laughs> And then somebody at the bonfire said, oh, the sin box is gone. It went up in smoke. It's gone. And I was like, my sins went up in smoke. That's wonderful. And I felt very blessed. I have a terrible apology to make to the pastor. I was supposed to tell her about what she was supposed to do for the sins, and I forgot. I forgot all about it, and she and my wife talked about this, and now I'm in trouble. No, <laughs> no. So I apologize to the pastor no. so much. Don't. I go with the flow. <laughs> Evidently, the flow should have been much better. Well, <laughs> well, other one person who remained nameless kind of was wondering why I didn't offer the box before, but I kind of didn't know what I was supposed to do. But you know, the Lord, we the don't Lord need to worry about does. that. Yeah. Anyway, you, no, don't, there's nothing to worry about. We go with the flow, we're family. It's okay. But Hallelujah. one thing that I, I love the snow too, and the relationship with the sins, there's a, a verse somewhere in Isaiah, and it says, like, our sins are washed like snow. And um, I know other people have said this during the week, but you know how we had snow before and it was kind of dirty? And so then the new snow, it just cleaned everything up and it just reminded me. And what I loved about um, the fires, I was doing um, research on it and it goes back generations because the first Sunday in Lent is traditionally related to fires and, and purifying our, you know, our, our sins. But as the embers, flew around and we all kind of <laughs> left. So, But it reminded me, and I, I looked at some pictures, of the sins literally going into heaven and disappearing. And so, and that's what our message is about, Lent. So no apologies for anything. You know, we, God loves us and uh, we do our best and it was a beautiful time. But um, any other announcements or anything? Well, this is the day that the Lord has made, as I mentioned, and let us continue in our attitude of praise and prayer. And if you join me in the opening prayer. God of the covenant, you are faithful. Your love never ends. Just your ways and guide us through paths of love and forgiveness. We may witness to your grace and salvation. And now I invite you to rise as you're able as we sing together the opening hymn, Lord, who throughout these 40 days. Please rise. <laughs>
And now please join me in the prayer of confession, followed by some time for silent confession. God of the rainbow, you made a covenant with all creatures, promising life and hope. God of pathways, you show us how we should walk, yet we forget our connection with one another and think that we are the center of the universe. We wander from your paths of truth into paths of deceit and pride. Forgive us and lead us back into the arms of your love. Amen. Hear the good news. God is merciful and full of steadfast love. God will not forget us. God will wash us clean and lead us on paths of steadfast love and faithfulness. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Uh, this is the uh, first reading from Genesis 9, verses uh, 8 to 17, 8 through 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you, and with every living creature that was with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, all those that come out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth. I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on to earth. So God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all life on earth. And the second reading is from Psalm 25, verses 1 through 10. In you, Lord, my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful toward those who keep the demands of his covenant. And now I invite the children forward for children's moments. So good morning, everyone. How are you doing? Good. Now, some of you were here last night. You two were, did you? You were too. 
but who saw the, who was there for the fire? Yeah, there you go. So what did we do? Do you remember what we did? You put your sins on the fire. We wrote our sins down and we put it in the fire. You know why? Because that reminds us that when we pray to God, that God, there's a Bible verse that says that if we confess our sins, um, God will cleanse us and we, we are freed. And I think that's really neat. Now, this is the season of Lent and you'll be learning more about it. But see how I'm wearing purple and that's purple there. That's the color of Lent. And it's the color of, there's a, a special word called penitence. And it, it means that, you know, we're, we're really sorry and we should be sorry all the time. But this time of the year, we really think about how we can grow closer to God. And some people give up things like, some people give up things like chocolate or, or watching too much TV. But, but I want you to be thinking about, you don't have to tell me what it is today, but be thinking about what you could do to be closer to God. I like what you said, Xavier, that you prayed for your, your cousin and something like that, like saying prayers, do you say prayers at night or in the morning? And if you don't, oh, that's good. And then you can keep it up and, and then always remember if something happens to ask God to help you. But why don't you think about that and you ask your families how they can help you and I'm gonna ask you next week, okay? So, are you smiling today? All right, there you go, that's better. And so would you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for forgiving us of our sins. Help us to walk with you and trust you in good times and in bad. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, you're going to go to Sunday school, Colleen, and give these, and we can give them out in Sunday school. Our hymn of preparation this morning is Be Thou My Vision, Please Rise As You're Able. as you're able for the gospel lesson. The gospel lesson this morning is Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 15, the baptism and testing of Jesus. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, 
he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove and a voice from heaven, you are my son whom I love with you I am well pleased. At once the spirit sent him out into the wilderness and he was in the wilderness 40 days being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray. Gracious and heavenly God, we thank you for another day to get up and worship you. And now as we reflect on your words this morning, this first Sunday of Lent, may this be a time of transformation for us, but may you remind us that you are always with us and you walk with us every day of our lives. Amen. You know, the Gospel of Mark is a fast-moving gospel. And here it's, it's moving quickly. There aren't a lot of details. And so Mark describes Jesus being baptized in the Jordan. And then he writes, it's so interesting, I think, that the Spirit led him out into the wilderness. Why, I always wonder, did the Spirit send him out? Well, to be tested. And I guess for us, the message is, if we're serious in our journey of faith, sometimes we get into the wilderness of testing as well. The Israelites spent 40 years in the, in the wilderness. It was a terrible time. And yet, when we're in the wilderness, we have to trust our Lord who gives us comfort and strength. You know, often you hear throughout the Old Testament in particular, mentions of the wilderness. And I've been to Israel and it's a different kind of wilderness. Yes, there are some oasises with a lot of trees, but a lot of times it's more like desert. So water in there, getting water there is often difficult. Yet the psalmist says in um, Psalm 63, 1, that he thirsts for God in a dry and weary land where there is no water. We live in a culture that we are living in the wilderness. Life can be dry, barren, scary, and it can sap us from strength. So if we're being tested now by perhaps it's an old memory, something that happened before, God reminds us that he does not leave us alone. In the midst of our challenges, God will strengthen us. So we too, I think, must learn to rely on God. In Isaiah 35, 1, we hear, the wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. The desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. So as I reflected on this passage of scripture today, I thought about three things, three messages for this first Sunday of Lent. First, whatever our wilderness experience is, number one, it is just a temporary stop. Now we notice in our text it says he was in the wilderness, 40 days was tempted, and then he moves on. He goes right to his task. And Jesus was being prepared for his ministry. And I don't know, but sometimes I think it's an attitude thing when we're going through difficult times. We learn lessons through it, don't we? Um, the things that we get through, we're able to share with others. and. And this preparation is sometimes necessary, but it's done by God who really has to change us inwardly. So our task is we can't really give up, even though sometimes it's tempting to, isn't it? When we're in the midst of a difficult time. So Jesus gives us this example of preparation. And as we go inwardly, we should be changed. I thought it was so interesting that the text continues and he begins and he moves on. And he doesn't enter, Mark doesn't mention all the other activities. 
but he just wants us to, to follow so simply with trust. He was tempted and tried and he moved on. How many times I know that I get a little bit stuck in those wilderness experiences. I keep on going back to them, you know. I wonder how many of the sins that I put into that box I'll be putting into another box another year or, na or nailing to the cross. Yet we do that sometimes, don't we? But we are reminded to keep moving on. And verse 13 of our text tells us that Jesus was tempted by Satan. And it, that's something difficult too. Yet God wants, I think, for each one of us to be able to know that he knows, he experienced pain and stress, and we can trust him because he went through it too. And so for each one of us during the season of Lent, we have to have God examine our hearts because believe it or not, testing can have a great outcome for us all. When we hang on to God, we can grow. There's a verse in Psalm 26 too, examine me, O Lord, and prove me, try my reins in my heart. But about the growth, I love this verse, we're reminded, consider it pure joy. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, let perseverance finish its work, that so you may be complete and mature and not lacking in anything. And also there's another passage, he says, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life, which is promised to all who love him. So I believe we need the community of, of faith, but as we go through our trials, our faith grows, our patience becomes stronger, and we're like steel that gets tempered, but we have to persevere knowing that God will bring us through. You know, and we can't stay there though in this place. The text that I, the one verse that really hit me is verse 14, when it says, and John was put into prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news. So he was tested and then he moved on. I think that's a, a challenging lesson. I don't know about some of you, but when I'm tested, sometimes I move on, but then I remember, I go back. And so, and I think we all do, and God loves us, but the message for us is to not stay there, but to keep going and to be faithful. And it's just a temporary place, this wilderness. And maybe sometimes it takes 40 years. Sometimes it might've been something that happened 60 years ago for you, but it is still just a temporary place. We need to trust and know that God will meet our every need. Secondly, as I came through this, I, I have this word, guide us, Lord. My original um, point was God walks with us, but I, I thought that was almost too passive because I think we have to reach out to God and ask for God for help. We, we heard Leo read um, Psalm 25, and hear these verses from this text. In you, Lord, my God, I put my trust. Show me your ways, Lord, teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are my savior and my hope is in you all day long. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right. He teaches them his way. All of the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful. God is with us and he'll help us. Often I think when we have gotten through or we have difficult memories of our wilderness experience, maybe a benefit is it, it helps us to reach out to God. But we always have to trust the Lord. And it is this process of preparation and obedience. And when Jesus, says in this text, as he came out of the water, when a voice came from heaven and said, you are my son whom I love, with you I am well pleased, this was a preparation in this anointing, and Jesus was obedient. He said, I don't think I want to do this. If this testing was this bad, I don't know what's next. You know, for, I know for, 
for myself when I've gone through testing periods, I always think, you know, I know I don't mean it disrespectfully to God, but I almost want to say, are you finished? You know, is there more once you get through it? Yet God just tells us that we need to be obedient and we need to trust him. And that is very difficult, I believe. And so how do we deal with our trials and how can we be successful? I guess we take our lead and our lesson from Jesus. We trust in God's word. And each time we're tempted, we go to God, sometimes going right to prayer. It's what I love what Xavier shared with us before. Out of the mouths of babes, when he was concerned, he went to his Lord and Savior who answered his prayer. We need to understand that God loves us. We have the word of God with us and we don't need to go through it alone. God walks with us. And so what a wonderful promise it is. And we just need to, to trust in the one that walks with us. And even though sometimes we won't feel great, we don't have a great outcome, we'll know we're not alone. Jesus' obedience and submission were tested by his wilderness experience, but then he was changed. And I know if I asked every person here, I bet you could tell me a story of when God brought you through a difficult time and you were able to share that with other people. Because once we have been blessed with God's walking with us, I think our next job is to share that with other people. And finally, my third and final point is be open to transformation. Jesus went on and his trial did not define him. We will be tried in the wilderness, but we don't have to worry. God is with us. The trial will define our faith and, and we'll be purified. Sometimes it will hurt. We must go through these processes of obedience, and, and, but we go through and know and get closer to God. In the passage from Genesis, we hear this beautiful word. And God said, there is a sign of the covenant that I am making between me and every other creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my clouds, my rainbow in the clouds and the sign of the covenant between me and earth. In this passage, we're reminded of God's love for us. There's such power in transformation. And I don't know about all of you, but every time I see a rainbow or there's a rainbow, I look at it. And I've been on the highway, like 95. I remember I was a 95 in um, Delaware, and everybody pulled over because it is still a magical promise. But not it, it's, it, we're mesmerized, but it's a reminder, I think, that the storm isn't the end of the story. We can be blessed and will be blessed. So during this Lenten season, open your hearts to God in a different way. Consider his presence in your life. Maybe as simple as if you pray in the morning, pray at night. Maybe pick one Bible verse. You, you don't even have to work that. Look it up on your phone. But just know that the wilderness can sap our energy. But that is not the end of our story. And through worship and prayer and fellowship and study of God's word, we can move forward. So while we live in the wilderness this Lenten season, remember these verses from Isaiah 58, 11. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Amen. And now we have, this is our time of prayer. Um, and if you have any prayer cards that you have, um, Annette is collecting them. You can keep Debbie in prayer. She's very sick with, with a cold or flu or something today. And many of you that I talked to, I had a really, really good friend in my old church. They called me, and I, was, I am friends with the family, and the, the, her sister Leslie was in a just a horrible car accident. She's already had hours worth of surgeries. Every bone has been broken now, and, now, and she does have a traumatic brain injury, but the fact that she is still here is a miracle. But um, 
if you could pray for Tony as her husband and, um, and then Dana as a sister. And, but it's one of these sad situations. Let us unite our hearts together in prayer. Dear gracious God, we thank you for this church family. We thank you for each person gathered here. Lord, we, we know that we come with many concerns on our hearts this morning. So now, Lord, we ask that you will touch each heart. And for those things that were too painful for us to write on a card, Lord, we ask that you will touch us and and just heal us and provide for us. We pray for so many people who are having trouble with allergies this time of year. When we lift up Debbie, who's, who's sick, and um, Jennifer, who I prayed for before, who's um, looking into treatment for her um, situation um, with, with cancer. Lord, we, we ask for prayers for Leslie. Lord, she's such a vibrant person, and Lord, um, you, you have sustained her thus far, and I pray that you will heal her body and, and waken her from her coma. Be with Tony and Dana and Ashley and the rest of the family, and bless them. We also pray for Alana, Lee, Jane, Mare, for personal health needs. We pray for Andy for health and healing. We also pray for the family of Robert Bonilla for the passing of his mother on Thursday. Lord, we also pray for James Matthews' um, dad who had a fall this morning, and I think that he might still be in the ER. Please bless him. We pray for Elena and Josh Moore who have COVID. And Lord, we just thank you for any other prayers that are on our heart. Lord, we pray for our world, our nation, Oh, Lord, and oh, we continue to pray for Lena's mom that you can heal her and bring her healing. But, Lord, there are so many other concerns and so many needs. But we just want to thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, for loving us, and help us to walk with you in faith and in joy, trusting in you. And now let us pray the prayer that the Lord himself taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. And now I invite the ushers forward.
gracious and heavenly God, we thank you for all that you do for us. And now with grateful hearts full of love and adoration, we offer these gifts to you. May they be used for your honor and glory. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is, O oh Jesus, I Have Promised. benediction. Go and testify to God's faithful promises. Go and follow God's ways. Go and proclaim God's good news.